Hello and welcome to the How Not to Screw Up Your Kids podcast, the bucket emptying episodes. I'm your host, Dr. Mary Han, psychologist and parenting expert. And in this week's bucket emptying episode, I want to talk about mealtime management. So this is practically speaking, how do we manage mealtimes? Because in some families, it's a war zone. In other families, it's actually a really great time to connect. So let's just talk a little bit around mealtimes and what they are opportunities for. And in my view, mealtimes are a real opportunity for us to spend time as a family and connect and to communicate, to catch up on what's going on, and just to generally have conversations. However, I am very aware that in the way that we operate now with our children coming in from school at different times, or our work schedule with our younger children in terms of picking up from from either nannying or picking them up from nursery, that it's really difficult in lots of ways to actually have a family meal. So I think the first thing I would say is don't be hard on yourself. If there are genuine logistical, practical issues that get in the way of you being able to have regular patterns of meals together as a family during the week, then don't have any guilt around it. Just try and create opportunities to at least sit with your children whilst they have their meal. So that's the first thing is that just just review the situation Monday to Friday. If it just doesn't work and you've got multiple meals happening, then it's just about where might you then be able to kind of sit with your children. So it may be, for example, that your partner is the one that comes in much later. And actually, as a way of maintaining your relationship, you want to eat with them. Great. But just make sure then that when your children are having their meal, that you're sitting with them, engaging as though you were eating, just to provide that opportunity for them to kind of have that conversation. If we're talking about older children and we're talking about teens that are regularly coming in at different times, they're getting themselves to and from school, to and from college. And actually you end up with lots of different meal times because it's just not practical genuinely not practical and only you can answer that question then look to the weekends to try and bring in that connection time it's such an easy yet super crucial way that we can win and we can connect and we communicate with our children particularly as they get older with our teens when we're slightly sort of out of their out of touch with their world because they're sort of much more independent so that's the first thing i would say so There's the practical aspect of doing that. You know, you might be in a really fortunate position and you can do quite a few meals together. And particularly at the weekend, you can do all three. Or it may well be that you're looking at, you know, you'll be lucky if you can get one meal together during the week, but you can at least get maybe two at the weekend. That's the first thing we need to look at. I think the next thing is really around what are going to be your kind of non-negotiables in your in your home? And I, I do think there are some things in my mind that should be non-negotiable across all households. And that's things that are barriers to your family connection. If we're saying that mealtimes are an opportunity for us to talk, to connect with our children, to catch up, to discuss, to debate, then anything that gets in the way of that in my view, is something that you want to avoid. So for example, one of the things that I would 100% want you to all avoid is technology at the table. And that's, I, I know that that can be really tricky for adults, as well as our children and our teens. And so let me just talk you through a couple of things. We can't be fully present and really engaging and actively listening and commenting and having conversations if our mind is elsewhere, let alone our actual focus is on a on a phone. So this is not just about mobile phones or iPads and technology not being at tables, but that we've disengaged ourselves from the work emails, from the, the conversation that we're having with friends, whatever that might be. I think that's a really important thing. It breaks my heart so often when I'm out for a meal and seeing families at a at a table in a restaurant and the children are just plugged into devices. I know mealtimes can often be fractious, particularly for younger children, trying to sort of sit through what can feel like a you know inordinate amount of time, but they are never going to flex that muscle, build that muscle, and be able to then, as adults, actively engage with their colleagues and their contemporaries if we are not holding them to account when they're younger in that way. So if you are currently finding that the only way that you're managing to get your child to eat anything 
is by having them watching something on an iPad or with television, then look to see how you might begin to reduce that so that you can create. So that for me is really look at anything that you are currently doing in your home that gets in the way of communication and there being an open discussion amongst your family. That's the things that you really, I would strongly advise you to get rid of. Now that doesn't mean that your children or your teens even are suddenly going to begin to open up. But what we're doing is we're creating an opportunity. We're creating the space so that if they choose to open up, we're then able to be there, to be present, to be actively listening. So we're looking at you know, looking at routines during the week to see what we can and what we can't do in terms of meals. We're looking at what are the things that we can set as absolute no-goes that interfere with the communication. And then it's thinking through what are, what are going to be the kind of the rules and the foundations in your home? Are you going to insist that everybody stays at the table until the last mouthful is eaten? I don't have a definitive opinion on this. I think it's something that you want to do as part of your family kind of dynamics and your family culture and the, the environment that you're trying to set and what you value. But it's really thinking about that. Are you going to create situa- a culture that actually your children have to try everything that is presented to them, but they don't necessarily then need to eat it if they don't like it? I think I would encourage that because I think that it's really good to encourage children to be curious about food. And even if something looks like it isn't something that they want to try, but if they can at least try it, I think that is also good. But you might have a child that you're really struggling with around meal times, and that might feel at the moment a step too far. What we do not want, what I would really actively encourage against, is making meal times a battle. They shouldn't do because what we're trying to really encourage our children to understand is that meal times are about communication and that food itself is fuel. It's what we put into our bodies in terms of our energy, in terms of being able to fuel us in order to allow our brain to do its job in terms of learning and concentration and creativity as well as our body in terms of the muscles and the energy in order for us to be able to do the physical activities that we enjoy. So we really don't want to get into a situation where food becomes a battle. And it may, so I would encourage you to really think through, if you've got a policy at home that everything must be eaten that's on the plate, just where does that come from? I know that that was something that was very clear at my home when I was a young child and my mother felt very strongly that we needed to do that and the reason for that was that she very much had the view that we were very fortunate to have food and so if we place something on our plate then we should eat it because others you know don't have that opportunity don't aren't able to access the food that we are and if that's your view then that's absolutely fine that's part of the culture that you're creating in your home and values around gratitude, then rather than battling about the last morsel absolutely being eaten, what you want to maybe do instead is encourage a responsibility and an ownership that when you choose to place something on your plate, that you then need to finish eating it. And so you might shift what you might currently do, which is to plate up your children's meals and then present it to them and ask them to eat all of it to instead them being able to dip in and out. And I think that that's also helpful when we're trying to encourage our children to eat more of the good stuff, that what we can then do, and I understand it takes time and I understand we're very busy parents and that we've got multiple things to juggle, but this is part of a long-term strategy of developing good habits around food. So what we might then do is ask them particularly if we're having battles around vegetables, is what we might then do is present three vegetables and children have to have to have a portion of two and try the third. So it's that you really want to think creatively about how can we how can we make mealtimes an opportunity for us to connect as a family, but how can we also use mealtimes as an opportunity to instill some of the values that we feel are important without it being a, I'm the adult, you're the child, I'm telling you what to do, to this is the importance of meals, this is the importance of fuel, and this is how as a family we're going to present it, and we're giving you that ability to make those choices, but with those choices come a responsibility. So I hope you found that helpful. 
If you have loved listening to this episode, I would be ever so grateful if you could rate, review and comment on the podcast so that others can find us and we can spread the love. So until next time.